Welcome back to my Classic Ladder Basic Tutorials for Linux CNC. In tonight's lesson I want to do a little bit of a side-by-side -side comparison between Classic Ladder and OR and XOR statements and their respective HAL components which are AND2, OR2, and XOR2. If I open up my custom post GUI AND OR XOR HAL In order to get the AND OR and XOR2 components to load into HAL, we have to load them in, then we have to add them to the servo thread, and then from there we can go and we can define each one of the statements. So to do that, we do a load RT, AND2, and then we tell it how many AND2s we want to load to our HAL configuration. For the ORs, we'll do a load RT OR2. In this case, I'm doing a count of three, but I'm only really using two of the counts. So I'm just having an extra count just for good measure in case I need it. Um, you could I, could, I could change that to two and then just take out the 2.2 .2 servo threads. But in this case, I'm just going to leave it at three. I'm going to be using my PlayStation controller again just to show some examples. So to do that I'm doing a load USR with a uh, dash capital W HAL underscore input dash KRAL USB and the USB is just the name of the game controller when it was defined in PNC conf. This extra line here is just to reverse my hat direction, my directional pad direction for the y-axis. Not really needed in this lesson, I just copied it and pasted it just in case. So what I have in here is I have a bunch of commented out statements and I'm going to switch between each one. I figured if I were to type all of them in to show you it would have taken me way longer than I want this video to run so I'm just going to remove the comments from every line for each section that I'm going to show so the first one I want to cover is the AND statement and the AND statement I have a net dead man is the name of my first switch that's going to be the name of the switch that I want to use as the universal dead man switch for every AND statement that I have uh, to follow. So the dead man switch again will be my TL2 button on my PlayStation controller. And in this case I have to add it to each of the AND statements that I want to use. So I'm um, applying this button to AND 2.0 in 0 AND 2.1 in 0 and if I wanted to add it to the third count I would add it to AND 2.2 dot in 0 and that would define that key as a universal input key for all of those AND statements. The last thing on the list is input dot 0 dot button dash TL2 which is the button that is getting defined to those AND statements. The next button is the spindle up button and in this case it's going to utilize the AND 2.0 component input number one. From there I define input dot zero dot button dash B as the button that has to be or that will be pressed to basically light up the AND statement AND 2.0 and I'm going to show you that in HAL configuration. The AND statements necessitate you to press two buttons at the same time to enable a single action. So in the case of the first two dead man and spindle up, dead man must be pressed and spindle up must be pressed in order for the action to take place which 
again in this case is net spindle increase and 2.0 dot out and that and 2.0 dot out pin is going to control how UI spindle zero override increase the spindle down button that's applied to AND 2.1 in 1 is input button C and that in conjunction with the dead man switch will apply itself to the spindle decrease output using AND 2.1 dot out and that's controlling how UI dot spindle dot zero dot override dot decrease so to make it a little bit easier to to see I'm going to go into Linux CNC and I'm really changing it up a little bit this time because I'm using Axis instead of GMO Kapai. If I go into my show how configuration I go to pins go to AND2. Because I told it a three count we have AND2.0 AND2.1 and AND2.2 I want to add the AND statements to my watch list, so I'm going to add IN0, IN1, and OUTPUT. And then under AND 2.1, I'm going to add 0, 1, and OUTPUT. Under my input, because I know I'm using button TL2, I'm going to add that. I'm going to add button B and button C and we can test those out to make sure that they're working properly so you'll see that as I press the buttons not only does the input button light up but also the AND 2.0 statement that the button is is attached to so in the case of button B it's going to be AND 2.0 dot in one in the case of button C it's going to be AND 2.1 dot in one and then when I press the TL2 key, the select key on my PlayStation controller, it's going to light up and 2.0 in 0, and 2.1 in 0, and the input dot button TL2. So getting a little bit deeper into it, we want to check our increases and decreases. And knowing that we have these buttons available, if we look at our spindle override, it's not moving. Why is it not moving? Because I have to hold in the dead man switch in order to release functionality of the increase and the decrease of my spindle speed. So if you look to the left, you'll see that right there. So now we're going to go over the OR statement. Now the OR statement works a little bit differently than the AND statement. The OR statement specifies that I can use two different buttons to activate both spindle increase and spindle decrease. In this case, we're going to have a we're going to have some nets for spindle up one, spindle up two, and a spindle up so spindle up one is just button B using an or 2.0 dot in zero and applying it to input dot zero dot button B spindle up two is going to use or 2.0 in one and apply to input dot zero dot button C so now button B and button C are going to be tied to the output of how UI spindle dot zero dot override dot increase the OR 2.1 for spindle down is going to be applied to button TL2 and the OR 2.1 in 1 is going to be applied to button TR2 so the, st uh, the select and start keys on my PlayStation controller will apply themselves to spindle down 2.1 dot out and that's going to go to how UI spindle dot zero dot override dot decrease so if I save my how file and I reload Linux CNC
take it out of eStop. We'll go to our HAL configuration again. And in this, in this case, we're going to look at pins OR2. And we're going to add IN0, IN1, and OUT to our watch list for both 0 and 1. We'll also add the input 0, button B, button C, TL2, and TR2, R2D2. So looking at what we have here, you'll notice that when I press the select or the start button, the spindle override is already starting to decrease. If I press button B or button C, the spindle speed is increasing. So that just means that two buttons can control the exact same function, but there's no dead man switch to stop either one from working. So the last HAL example I'm going to cover is the exclusive OR. Now exclusive OR is very similar to an OR statement, but the difference is that it's an exclusive input. So you can press one button or the other and they will both they'll, they'll both register as true to the output but if you press both buttons at the same time it will disable the output that's why it's an exclusive or it's an exclusive either one button or the other so you can either press B or C but you can't press both in the previous example I was able to press both of those buttons it wouldn't give me it wouldn't give me a double register so to speak but it just allows me to press both of those buttons and in certain cases you don't want that to to act to, to to occur so they give you the option to set an exclusive or output using the XOR to and again dot zero dot in zero is button B exclusive or two dot zero dot in one is button C and then the output for exclusive or 2.0 is how UI spindle override increase and then for our spindle decrease the first button is exclusive or 2.1 in 0 tied to input dot zero dot button TL2 spindle down number two is exclusive or 2.1 dot in 1 and that is applied to input dot zero dot button tr2 r2d2 and our exclusive or output number one is how ui spindle dot zero override decrease so the only difference really between the or and the exclusive or is just putting an x in front of the or so we'll open our session back up take it out of e-stop go into our HAL configuration under pins for our watch list we're going to go down to the XOR section and we will look at input 0 1 and out for both dot 0 and dot 1 and we'll go to our input We'll add button B, button C, TL2, TR2. I'm not going to do it. Now if we look, we get spindle down, we get spindle up. But now if you look, right now if I hold in button B, they all light up. The output lights up. Everything is sending information out to Linux CNC. If I hold down button C, you'll notice that the output goes false. That's the exclusivity of the exclusive OR statement. So it's either this button makes it go up, this button makes it go up, but both buttons will go false. 
Same thing with the spindle decrease. I can go spindle decrease with the select key, spindle decrease with the start key, but when I hit spindle decrease with both, it disables the output. So now I want to show you the differences between the HAL files of the HAL logic versus the ladder logic. So I have two HAL files, custom post GUI and or XOR HAL, and I've got custom post GUI CL HAL. I've got both of those labeled in my post GUI call list, and I would just change the comment over from one to the other. If I open my classic ladder how list and I open the and or XOR you'll see that they are a little bit different from one another. So in order to use and or and XOR I have to not only load them into the real time but then I have to add them to the servo threads and then from there, I build my statements using the HAL language. For classic ladder, all I do is just net the classic ladder inputs to buttons that I want to assign. And then I assign or I net my classic ladder outputs to my overrides. So when you're using ladder, it's more of building your net structure or your ladder IO structure in your HAL file versus building your entire IO structure in HAL. So if we go into our session again, and because I have classic ladder available, I could just go in to ladder editor because when I made this sim I, uh, I just told it to enable classic ladder with a blank canvas so I have my blank canvas I'll go to editor modify and then from there we start building our ladder logic our output 0 and output 1 are our spindle increase and our spindle decrease we'll put our straight lines to connect our inputs to our outputs our first input is going to be I0, which is going to be our dead man switch. Our second input on our top line here is going to be I1. And our input on our second rung here is going to be I2. So I hit OK. I'll go to my HAL configuration. I'll go to my watch list. And now I'm not going to be looking at AND2, OR2, or XOR2. If you notice, they're not even on here because they're not loaded into the real time. In this case, I'm going to go to Classic Ladder. And then I'm going to go to my inputs. I'm going to look at input 0, 1, and 2. I'm going to look at output 0 and 1. And I'm going to go down to my input. And I'm going to look at my button B, C, TL2, and TR2 for the next examples. So looking at those, if I press move that over, if I press button B, you'll see that I get the classic ladder input, and then I get input button B. I'll press button C, I'll get the classic ladder input and I'll get the input button C. If I hold down the select key, I get my my two I zeros, my classic ladder in zero zero, to light up when I press TL2. So now for my overrides, if we look at Linux CNC, I hold in the select key and I can use button B and button C to increase and decrease the spindle. 
and you'll see that every time I press the button it makes the completed circuit with the long pink line. To change these to OR statements, I would just go to Editor, Modify. I will replace I, or I1 with a blank line. I'll create my inputs down below. I'll connect those with a vertical line. And I'll say I2. I1 and I3. So now these are OR statements, so that means that either this button or this button will enable the up and the down. If I click on each of the symbols, you'll see what I have the HAL signals named to. I may have them a little bit of, you know, a little out of order, but you get the idea. In this case, if I look at my button zero, which is my select key, and my I2, which is my C key, they both will change, and same thing with the start key and the button B. they'll both increase and decrease the spindle speed. So if I want to if I want to fix that I want actually button or input 3 to be where input 2 is and then input 2 to be where input 3 is. So I'll just go to my editor I'll go to modify, select input 3 input 2, hit OK. So now I've got my select and start keys to increase the speed and I've got my B and C to decrease the speed. But because I have two buttons to to use, if we wanted to give these some exclusivity and not make it so that I could press both of them at the same time, we could do an exclusive OR and again we just go to editor modify and in this case we're just going to put two brake coils or normally closed coils connect those with a vertical line delete the previous vertical line and just flip flop the name of each one of these so I3, I0 I2 I1 So now I have exclusive ORs, which when I press button B, button C, select, and start, they all complete the circuit. But when I press both of them at the same time, you'll see that the circuit does not light up. So I'll show you again. Select and start at the same time does not light up. Select and uh, button B and button C at the same time does not light up. You'll notice that it does change because there's a slight delay from when one uh, one disables and the other does. So maybe this isn't the greatest example, but you can see that in the latter, the buttons do not allow the output to pass. Or they shouldn't allow the output to pass. So I hope this uh, I hope this gives everybody a little bit of a uh, little bit of insight as to the similarities and the differences in classic ladder versus doing your circuits in your HAL. Um, neither one is better than the other. They both have their pros. They both have their cons. It's all a matter of what you feel comfortable with, and what you know, what you're used to what you what you feel is best for your application i feel that i'm a little bit more a little bit more comfortable looking at ladder logic because i have done some plc troubleshooting in the past nothing major but i've done enough to know that 
I'm looking at inputs, I'm looking at outputs, and I know the differences between normally open, normally closed, um, I.O., and, and I know what timers are, counters, things like that. Um, my next lesson is going to be a basic introduction to timers, counters, and um, latching outputs and stuff like that. So stay tuned, and um, please like and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you again for watching. Thank you for all of the positive feedback from everybody, and I will see you soon.